DLC. It's a word we've been accustomed to hearing over and over again for a while, to the point where it's now usually frowned upon when some new content gets announced. Down to how many game developers are abusing the fact that they can sell cut out pieces of games alongside shallow add on experiences that don't hold any value. Dying Light's been out for over a year, and so now's the perfect time to bring along a new, fresh chunk of content for us to rip open and devour, taking us back to that zombified world once again. But are we falling into another greedy trap? And does the expansion add anything worthwhile to our overall experience? Well, it's time to find out. Here's my review on a DLC pack called Dying Light the following. After escaping the infected bowels of her ran through a sewer system, Kyle Crane, aka the guy who likes to risk his life to deliver a letter, is on another dangerous mission to find out how to control the zombie virus, and become immune to it after hearing a survivor babble on about a weird cult in the countryside that knows how to deal with it all. Antis and supplies are at an all time low, down to everyone in the tower hogging it all. And being the hero, it's your job to go and seek out this mythical immunity and save your friends from the infected shitstorm that you've left them all behind in. Venturing off into the countryside seems like the best bet, but it's not long before you realise that most of the survivors out there are part of a weird religious cult called the Children of the Sun, and worship a leader called the Mother. Now it all sounds like a pile of superstitious horseshite, and it's safe to say that the Children of the Sun cult isn't exactly a normal religion to be a part of. Sacrificing pigeons and people on altars, wearing wooden sun masks, and calling themselves the Faceless, like a bunch of creepy nutjobs. But if this so-called Mother does in fact hold some kind of secret on how to be immune, then it's totally worth checking out, but Crane's going to have to gain a bit of respect in the meantime from the survivors and earn the cult's trust. So Dian Light the following trades in its urban sound centres and concrete buildings for a more expansive flat rural environment, with sprawling fields of whining undead farmers and the lovely coastal cliffside scenery you're likely to see on a postcard. But this also means that there isn't quite as many places to use those parkour skills. You can't exactly jump all over the place and scale huge buildings if you're in the middle of a zombie infested field. And with the game taking place mainly around post apocalyptic farmlands, you better get used to seeing long grass that desperately needs cutting. The map that we've been given here is friggin' huge. Thought the main game's map was big? Well, try doubling it. And that's the kind of map size we're dealing with in the following, which is pretty crazy considering it's just a DLC. Though unlike the main game, there's a lot less buildings to explore and you'll mainly be navigating around huge open areas and dirt path roads. But to make travelling around a bit more simpler, and to stop the game turning into a running simulator, what better way to introduce a brand new mechanic to the game? That's right, you've got yourself a driving licence, and the ability to burn some rubber and dart across the expansive landscape, ploughing down hordes of pissed off zombies and turning them into mushy paste, in your very own off-road buggy. But Tetland hasn't just slapped a vehicle in the game and left it there. They've also gone that extra mile and taken into account that you're supposed to be a survivor. And with that, you'll have to keep fixing that buggy to ensure it's going to keep working and refuel it too. Using salvage fuel from other cars in the environment. As if you break down in the middle of a field once the sun goes down. Yeah, good luck with that. There's also upgrades for the vehicle, customization options to pimp your ride, and it's even got its very own skill tree. Lots of attention put on driving in this DLC, and it's surprising how much depth is here. Though you don't actually need your buggy in most of the game's missions, but it's a great way to get you from A to B quickly, especially with fast travel being something that just doesn't exist. Speaking of the game's missions, they go from the safe and simple, go take this thing to this guy type tasks, to the downright spooky and fucked up. Damn, wow, well, that's all kinds of fucked up. But most of the time they involve helping out survivors, to become noticed by the Children of the Sun cult. And so the majority of the quests you've set out to do kind of feel like side missions, though they're still fun to do nevertheless. Aside from missions though, there's a hell of a lot to do to prevent boredom kicking in and to satisfy those procrastinating needs. Getting sidetracked in open world games is a pretty normal thing to do, and Dying Light the following is no different. There's a whole load of random encounters and dependent people to help out, time challenges, races, collectibles, safe houses, airdrops, and there's even a few new things thrown in here too. Ever wanted to venture into a volatile nest and take on those predator wannabes head first? Me neither, sounds like a stupid idea. But wait until the light dies and the nasty pasties come out to play. If you've got enough balls, this will give you the window of opportunity to crawl into their nest like a sneaky bastard and slap their babies over the head with a metal hammer. Probably sounds like the most messed up night out ever, but doing this will not only give you a bunch of valuable XP, 
but it'll also lower the number of volatiles you'll see snooping around when the sun goes down, trying to give you a hard time. But if the sound of getting your face eaten by another zombie's face doesn't sound like a horrible death, you can always get trampled on by one of the game's newer creatures, the Freaks of Nature. Though when I say new, they're basically boss versions of already existing enemies, like the Demolisher, that take an absolute shit ton of damage to take out. The kind of battle designed for co-op, unless you fancy crafting and throwing molotovs for half an hour. These guys are as hard as nails, and they're the toughest enemies to kill. So tough in fact, that they even warrant their own health bar that pops up at the top of the screen. So it's definitely best being prepared for a war if you choose to take one on. Dying like the following will have you saying things out loud like, Please get off the car, I can't see the bloody road. Bro, do you even lift? And... Yeah, it'll be alright. Every now and then, a DLC pack gets released and turns out to be a great addition or extension to an already existing game. And I'm happy to say that Dying Light the Following is one of these fairly rare spectacles. As far as content is concerned, it pisses all over some of the other, more recent DLC packs and Season Pass content we've seen in other games, and offers a variety of things to keep us busy with some new gameplay mechanics, interesting missions, places to explore, and a massive map, filled up with stuff to keep us occupied for a while. Considering Dying Light was a sleeper hit, it's nice to see it's finally getting some much deserved attention. The following isn't a quick cash grab, but instead it's a fully fleshed out experience, expanding on what we already enjoyed from the base game, plus adding new elements to the DLC to keep it fresh and different enough to care about. If you like the original storyline of Dying Light and fancy jumping back into it again, then the following is a great excuse to do so. Let this be a lesson to all game developers across the globe. This is how you do DLC. Take note guys. So sharpen those knives, refuel the buggy, and get ready to create some roadkill. Dying like the following is bringing that undead game back to life. What the hell is this mysterious cult all about? Is there really a cure for the infected? And will Kyle Crane ever stop trying to be a good Samaritan? Well one thing we know for certain is that there's plenty more zombies waiting to have their arms sliced off and their heads bashed in. So guys, that's my review on Dying Light the following, I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to smack that like button if you did before you go, and subscribe to see loads of other reviews, guides and videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.